Hey, what's going on everyone? Nate with Phil Craft Revival. Um, I've been an Army medic since 07, and so I got to have a little bit of input on what we uh, wanted to, to put inside of a kit to manage bleeding. And so we've come up with this bleeding control kit, and this in conjunction with a tourniquet of whatever preference you might have, uh, cap, soft tee, or uh, any of the other inferior ones. Before you accuse me of blasphemy, I'm just kidding. This bleeding control kit, again in conjunction with a tourniquet, is everything that we're gonna want to manage massive hemorrhaging for at least one person. And so what I wanna do real quick is talk about what's inside of the kit and how essentially it's used. So the first thing we're gonna start with uh, are the gloves. Um, nitrite gloves that we that, that we threw in here. Again, I tried to pick a color that were fluid, blood, you know, that things would show up easily, especially in a lot of situations, accidents happen in the dark. So I didn't want a, a super dark glove. This is the first important, uh, most important part that we're gonna start with because as we say, no glove, no love. And it doesn't matter if you're uh, treating a soccer mom or a homeless person before you get judgy. You don't know what someone's extracurricular hobbies are. So this is to protect me uh, and them. The next most important part is our hemostatic agent, right? We have our, our rolled gauze, quick clock, combat gauze. Um, this gauze is impregnated with a hemostatic agent that essentially is just a fancy way of saying it's impregnated with a, a chemical that is going to help stop bleeding faster. It kind of you know, recruits more of the body's natural clotting factors to be able to, to quickly get a clot. There's only so much in here though, and depending on how big their injury is, it could be a, a large wound cavity or whatever the problem might be. So in conjunction with this, um, we have the regular uh, compressed gauze that will also help uh, keep that cone of force pressure uh, on the blood vessel that's bleeding and we want packing based essentially all the way out to the layer, to the level of the skin. So this is a lot more gauze that we can recruit. It's also super versatile. You can use it in tons of different ways if need be, or in a, in a different spot if absolutely, if you had multiple injuries that you had to worry about treating. Once we get to the layer of the, uh, the, layer of the skin though, I could just hold pressure with my hands, but opportunity cost, it's a little labor intensive. And so that's not exactly the, the route that I wanna go. I, wanna, I need my hands to be able to do other things or treat other people. So we have a pressure bandage that we can wrap on top of all of that uh, and keep that pressure uh, as we're moving around, taking care of the other things that we needed to, to knock out, treating other injuries, again, calling for help uh, and going from there. So <clears throat> this, again, on the layer of the skin is what we'll wrap everything up with, nice and compact. And once we have that, we can use things if we, uh, if we so choose, depending on where we're at, uh, where we need to go, like uh, using our, our duct tape, our combat medic reinforcement tape, 100 mile an hour tape, whatever you want to call it. This is another versatile piece of kit because I can make other interventions with it. Like if I have to improvise some things. Securing my dressings, again, if you're gonna to have to do some carrying, but more likely probably some dragging to get someone to safety or to get yourself to safety, whatever the case might be. So it's another important piece of kit that we decided to throw in there to make sure you had uh, enough stuff to be able to make things happen. Again, all this stuff comes inside of this awesome uh, vacuum sealed package. You can keep everything in here, but uh, I recommend not doing that. I recommend once you get this, uh, it's got a quick pull tab if you decide to keep everything in there and you can rip everything out. But again, in a stressful situation, you're likely to pull this all the way through and stuff's gonna just boom, start falling everywhere. You, generally what I would recommend is finding a bag something that you're willing to carry for whatever activity you might think that you might be engaged in or that you're willing to put inside of the car, that you can put all this stuff kind of pre-staged inside. When you need something, you wanna be able to go straight to it. A lot of this material inside of here is all white, so it all looks alike. And you know, who's to say that you're not gonna go for one thing and pull out another? Or if it's all jammed inside of the plastic, again, when you go to grab it all, I, when I grab one thing, I don't want four to come out. So again, highly recommend when you get this, open it up, find a bag that you're willing to carry, stuff everything inside of there, pre-staged in a way that is that is accessible, that you can grab things in the order that you want it. Like we said, we want the combat gauze to come in contact with the source of the bleed, so that would be before things like the regular gauze. <clears throat> Grabbing things one at a time and not all at once uh, is what's gonna set you up for success. All right, so that was all the components of the bleeding control kit. Make sure you pack these things up in the way that it actually needs to be packed. If you don't have what you need for massive hemorrhaging and you think you might need to treat it, then this and again, coupled with a tourniquet is what you need. If you want to see uh, each of these opened up and how exactly I would use some of the considerations of these different pieces of kit, head on over to our paid platforms where you can get a more in-depth uh, example of how I would use this. And yeah, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.